My daytime running lights currently look like this, but I want them to look like this. I'm Jimmy, and you're watching One Road. A lot of us have gone through this dance before. We crave to update something on our vehicles, and naturally, LEDs seem like a simple, cost-effective option. We hit the internet and buy some cheap LEDs. The only problem is, a lot of those cheap LEDs are also cheaply made and don't take into consideration the number one problem with LEDs. Heat. When it comes to LEDs, heat kills. There are obviously many other problems with those cheap LEDs. For example, their color temperature might not be great, giving off a blue tint of light when you really wanted white. And the light output might be way too dim, or more common than not, way too bright. But we tend to look past all that because, well, we bought a 10-pack for just 10 bucks. A buck a piece, baby. And the dance goes on. We get sick of those blue tinted LEDs or they start flickering due to excessive heat. And we consider buying another better set of cheap LEDs. Well, let's pause the music and think about this. Why buy lots of cheap LEDs that have many issues when we could buy the best first that hopefully won't suffer from any of those issues. Well, I think I found them, guys. I just bought what I think are the best and most expensive LEDs you can buy. The Sylvania Zevo. Well, when it comes to the 3157 style bulb anyways. These guys were $25 down at my local auto parts store, and I'm hoping that those previously stated issues are nowhere to be found. Why am I hoping that? Let's take a closer look. You can see the Sylvania name written along the bottom. You can see this is their premium Zevo type. And you can also see the color temperature there, which is 6000 K, which gives a nice bright white color. You can see in this corner, they do fit a variety of bulb types. And you can see right here, it says lifetime warranty. Now, before I tear into this packaging, let's talk about that warranty. What's so awesome about Sylvania is they are a great brand. They've been making lights for all of our vehicles for many, many years. I was able to call right into the company and talk to someone. Let me repeat that. I was able to call right into Sylvania and talk to a customer service representative. That's unheard of with any of the other lights we buy on the internet, pretty much. Not only was I able to talk to someone, but she was incredibly nice. What I talked to her about was the warranty and how that worked. I wanted to know, you know, is it like a lifetime warranty tool? You know, it breaks, I walk into a hardware store, swap it out right there, no questions asked. And the answer is, well, not exactly. Uh, she did say that I could try to do that, but if they didn't honor the warranty that we'd have to go directly to Sylvania. But they do make it as painless as possible. As soon as you buy these bulbs, you go to a website, you fill out a form, that gives them the proof of your purchase and they keep it on file. Should you ever have a problem with these bulbs, you contact them, they already know that you've bought them and when it was, and apparently they'll just send you out a new bulb. So it seems pretty easy to me and pretty awesome that I'm spending $25 on two bulbs, but they're lifetime warranties, so they should never burn out. And if they did, they're gonna send me a new one. That's awesome. And on the back of the packaging, you can see it is not made in China, rather made in Italy. Let me get this thing open without cutting myself. All right, there we go, look at it. Very, very nice. Not only is this plastic really nice, but this heat sink up top, this is just unheard of. You just don't see this in the cheaper LEDs. The reason for this over-engineered heat sink is to literally pull the heat directly away from the LED diodes, you can see there, and just give this bulb an overall very, very long life. This here is the original equipment 3057 or 3157 incandescent filament bulb, and you can see there is no heat sink on it. The reason why there's no heat sink is because, well, they don't need it. These are obviously made to withstand their own heat that they produce, but they also don't last that long. And if you look inside, you can see the filament there is bouncing around because this one is blown. And this here was my attempt at replacing those 3057 incandescent bulbs with LEDs. And yes, these were the cheap LEDs I bought online. I got a pack of 10 of them and every single one of them suffered from the exact same problem and that was flickering. They started flickering because I was using them in my daytime running light position, which as you know, will stay on while I drive the vehicle all day. So I noticed that certain individual diodes on these LEDs would start flickering and it was just a terrible, terrible look. 
So I pulled them back out and put the old style incandescents back in. If we take a closer look at both of these LEDs, hopefully it's extremely obvious to you as it is to me, the Sylvania Zevos have tons of engineering and thought put into the design of this bulb. And these ones really were just designed to be very cheap and somewhat shaped like their original bulbs that they were replacing. And one last example here is this original 9006 halogen headlight, which can be replaced with an LED, something like this, and you can see they do include a heat heat sink on this because it is absolutely necessary. In the case of your interior bulbs like this, a heat sink may not be as necessary as a bulb that stays on constantly all the time. You see, these bulbs are on for a short period of time and turn off. Maybe they come on when your doors open and shut off when your door closes. Maybe you're using it as a map light, which is only on for maybe a minute and then you turn it off. So while they do build up heat, that heat usually dissipates as soon as they turn off. So here's those original 3157 daytime running light bulbs and they look good. But even though I do think they look good, they could look a lot better. I went ahead and disassembled everything so we can get at the back of this housing. And this should be fairly simple. Press the tab in on the back, give it a twist, and this whole thing should pop out just like that. And wow, I'm seeing some definite warping, melting, and discoloration on the bulb socket, which is not good. Just look at the condition of this socket. It is completely burnt. This is not good, but it does show you just what kind of heat these 3157 incandescent bulbs can put out, enough to literally cook the socket. And while this is lit, why don't we go ahead and try to take some temperatures just to see how hot this thing gets. So I'll take my infrared thermometer and try to see what the max heat is we get on this bulb. Look at that, 369 degrees. That's enough to cook a batch of cookies. Okay, I have the Zevo installed and it fits perfectly, just like factory. Let's go ahead and do the same thing with the infrared thermometer here. I'm trying to move it all around anywhere that, you know, there could be heat just to get this thing to sense whatever the highest temperature is. And you can see the max there is only 83, 83 degrees, look at that guys. I also wanna note the direction of light output on these LEDs. You can see these are relatively different from anything else on the market in that they fire the light behind themselves. And well, there's a very good reason for that. If we take a look inside this cloudy light housing here, you can see the entire rear area is reflective. And that's exactly what these Zevo LEDs are designed for. They're designed to shoot the LED light at the reflector and have the reflector reflect that light back out. So let's see what that looks like in practice. You can see the position of the LED. Wow. That is really, really cool. They look really good, nice, bright, white light, and it isn't blinding. And here you can see the main difference between the two. While the brightness isn't that different, the color temperature of the light is. That nice, clear, bright white look just comes off as a newer, fresher look. Let's change the other one out and see what it looks like together. And just like the other side, this driver's side is absolutely fried. You can see the socket is deformed and just overall cooked. Okay, here we go. Wow, look at the difference. Man, that looks so much better. Incredible. And just for comparison purposes, here are my LED headlights and daytime running lights. Well, what'd you think about these Sylvania Zevo 3157 bulbs? They certainly are over-engineered. They're made very well, and unfortunately, you have to pay for it. The theory is, due to this extra large heat sink, they're not gonna overheat. The lights aren't gonna start flickering, they're not gonna burn out, so hopefully that holds true. Number two, along with that heat sink and better performance, I would imagine comes a much better color temperature and more consistent color temperature. So hopefully these lights don't really change color over time. I'm hoping that we keep with that 6,000 Kelvin light color throughout the life of the bulb. They definitely are plenty bright without being too bright, which helps them to look factory. And that's what I want. As I showed with some of my older, cheap LEDs bought online, practically none of them paid any attention to heat whatsoever. And so in the case of a bulb that's on all the time, like I've been saying with the daytime running light, they end up just burning out and failing. So while the bulbs may be cheap initially, and then you run through them all until 
all of them have failed, then you gotta get online and buy another set of cheap bulbs. They end up not being so cheap after all. I have this saying that goes along with anything, but I tend to try to buy the best first. That way I don't have to buy the crap first and then throw that stuff away and then buy the best later on and therefore spend more money. If you just buy the best or what you want first, well, the whole time you had it, you had what you want and you had the best. And hopefully that equates to something that actually works the way you want it to work and the way it needs to work. Does that make sense? Hopefully. Well guys, I had a lot of fun making this video and if you enjoyed it at all, please don't forget to hit that thumbs up. Also subscribe to the channel if you're not already. I'm Jimmy, this is One Road, and I will see you in the next one.